An IT made investigation finds the state of Indiana waited months to tell emergency responders about a potentially deadly substance traveling through several counties. Millions of gallons of crude oil are hauled through Indiana from the Bakken region of North Dakota. New federal laws are in place after a series of explosions, but IT mates Bennett Haberly uncovered a crude awakening where local officials were left in the dark. Bennett. Eric and Lori, our investigation found the oil routes and the shipping estimates were being kept secret from first responders for months. After initially saying there was no issue, tonight the state admits they made a mistake. If you trace the tracks in Lafayette, you'll find everything from corn syrup to ethanol. But occasionally, a more dangerous substance heads this way. From what I know of it, it passes through our area going towards Indianapolis. The crude does? Yeah. The Bakken so, crude? Bakken crude. And so if you think of it in terms of a train full of gasoline, it's more flammable. Unlike traditional crude, Bakken oil is thinner, more volatile, more like jet fuel. Oh, mon Dieu! Oh, mon Dieu! Oh, my God! Bakken oil has been involved in a handful of explosive derailments. This July 2013 blast in Quebec killed 47 people. Subsequent derailments in North Dakota and Virginia spared lives, but led the U.S. government to issue a safety warning in January that the oil may be more flammable than traditional crude. In May, an executive order followed requiring that rail companies tell states when, where, and how often the oil is moved by rail. And last year, we had about 300,000 Balkan oil cars came through our county. 300,000? 300, 300,000 came through. And how often were you notified that that was happening? Not a single time. LaPorte Hazmat Director Jeff Hamilton has recorded video of what he says are Bakken oil trains passing through with no advance warning. The, the diamonds that's on the side, the red diamond, tells us what's on those trains. The order also says rail carriers must assist the states in notifying emergency responders in affected counties, sure something Hamilton says sure. didn't happen. There's been no email sent out, no nothing. That's what uh, uh, we're all saying. Hey, we're supposed to get at least notified of it. Uh, so, and it's not happening. Yeah, not. I haven't got one yet. That was until we started demanding answers. Our investigation found the state withheld information about tens of millions of gallons of Bakken crude oil being shipped through at least 12 Indiana counties. Is there any time this week where you guys might be able to talk to us about this on camera? We tried to get an explanation from the Indiana Department of Homeland Security, but after weeks of phone calls and emails, a spokesman declined to be interviewed and wrote, counties have been and are being notified with information about Bakken crude oil rail transportation. Except at the time, that wasn't true. The spokesman sent me that email at 10.52 a.m. on October the 8th. A separate email obtained by IT Mate shows the counties weren't notified until 11.38 that morning, almost an hour later. And when they did finally receive the information, including oil routes and weekly shipping estimates, it was dated June 3rd, meaning the state sat on the information for four months. When we finally pressed the state again, the spokesman admitted the mistake, writing, there was an internal delay at IDHS with respect to the first notification. It was not evaluated as efficiently as it could have been, and as a result, was not forwarded to the local responders as quickly as IDHS would have liked which is kind of, I'm sorry, that's nonsense, because we're the ones that's going to have to respond to this. One railroad notification shows the oil travels through some Indiana counties as often as 20 times per week. You're bringing stuff through town and our officials don't know about it, you're in the wrong. But not everyone believes the notifications are crucial. From a firefighting perspective, for us, it really doesn't make any difference. We're still going to approach it the same way as we would any other flammable liquid fire. To address some of the concerns, rail companies like CSX are now holding safety seminars for first responders, like this one in Indianapolis. Still, the information remains closely guarded. Well, CSX believes that that information should be kept confidential uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, some of it is commercially sensitive to us and to our customers. We've been lucky that we've not had anything significant here, but the, you know, there's always that risk and that's what we have to prepare for. Since we started asking questions, the state has received two more notifications from rail companies. Local responders told us the state also recently held a conference call, but gave no explanation for withholding that information. Our investigation continues online at wishtv.com, where we have information about where the oil travels in surrounding states. 
Tomorrow night at 6, we dive into another problem, leaking tank cars used to haul the oil and other hazardous materials that are still on the tracks. Bennett Haberly, 24 Hour News 8. On the road, right next to you, thousands of them. Tires, some newer, some used. Many of them sold from used tire shops across central Indiana. So how do you know what's safe for the road? IT mates Bennett Haberly found used tire quality varies and in some cases can have deadly consequences. There was no way. Truck just came over. I remember hearing my husband say, um, watch that truck. There was no avoiding it. Debbie Ford and her family were headed east on I-70 when a pickup truck headed west changed the course of their lives forever. Yeah, to, to this day, it's disbelief. The 2009 crossover crash mangled the Chevy Malibu. Debbie, her husband, and their younger son were all badly hurt. Their daughter, Erin, and her boyfriend, Luke Lovins, both died. The loss that Luke's mom and I suffer together. Um, that's a terrible thing to have to share. A state police photo shows the cause, a blowout from the Ford F-350's front left tire, a used tire. Yeah, very used. The crash report states the tread separated. It had been purchased at a uh, junkyard. Indiana only inspects commercial vehicles, not passenger cars. And the state, like many others, doesn't restrict the sale of used tires. In fact, the state even sells them online. But IT mate found opinions differ greatly on what's safe for the road. Yeah, I get tires that makes this one look bald, you know what I mean? IT mate went undercover. $20. Why is it $20? No, Trent. Hey, most of the tires we, we bought, they come from the dealerships. Some salesmen were up front. Exactly. I don't want to sell you something I wouldn't put on my phone. Others gave us wrong information. Can't you tell the tires, like, doesn't have the date on it? Not really. Can't you tell how old it is? Uh, is there a date on it? No, I don't. Actually, there is. A tire's age is encoded on the sidewall of every tire. For example, this one we bought was made in the third week of 2005. This one, the 11th week of 2009. We took the tires we bought to a handful of experts, including State Police Sergeant Ty Utterback, that same officer who investigated the crash that killed Aaron and Luke. It's probably not that unreasonable to think that there are thousands of tires in that type of condition or worse that are on the roadway. It doesn't appear to be in too terribly bad a shape. It's got a, a nice, decent tread. The only thing that concerns me on this one is it is starting to show some weather cracking between the treads. Mixed reviews for that tire, but what about this $15 tire we bought from a different store called Tron's? This is safe to put on like, my car now, though? Yeah, I mean, if you want to, put it, you can put it on if you want to. I mean, I don't see why not. I don't think so. Not for me. This tire should not be on the road. Personally, I, I think it'd be odd that somebody would sell you to put this on the road because this is essentially an unsafe tire. <laughs> You know where we got this tire? Not really. We bought it from you guys. From us guys? We bought it from you guys. I don't think so. Do you think it's safe? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if the customer, yeah, he can still ride on it. We had a handful of experts look at it, and they don't think it's fit for the road. Uh-huh. Well, it's a used tire, though. The salesman finally admitted we did buy it from him after I showed him the receipt. The two other stores didn't want to talk. If you guys sell it, why not stand by your product? I don't want to talk about it, bro. I, I think used tires present a lot of hazards that are unknown, that are unseen. While tire safety lobbyists warn that used tires can pose a risk, they strongly disagree over why. One says tire age is critical. The other says it's tread and inflation. There's no scientific or technical data that would support removing a tire at a particular age. These mothers can think of two reasons why tougher restrictions may be needed. All used tires should be inspected. If someone had told you you'd lose a child to a used tire, what would you have said? No way. No. I don't understand how a used tire would do it, but I do now. And the tire involved in that crash was nine years old, even though it was sold just months before the incident. The families 
have since settled civil lawsuits. I'll take a look at this video. Here's something that might be able to help you. You can actually check the tread on a tire by using a penny. Turn it upside down, and if it doesn't cover the top of Lincoln's head, as you can see, that tire on the right, you can see Lincoln's head is still showing, it might be time to change the, your tires. That's one way you so can really simple. tell. Very simple. Well, and I was going to say, I didn't know that the age was actually encoded in the tire there, but you could have tires worn really quickly, so two years old could still be a risk. Right, exactly, and so that's why it's so important to not only check your tread, but mm -hmm. check your uh, inflation levels, and also if you want to look at the date, it's printed on the sidewall of every tire. We've mm -hmm. spelled that out all on our website. We've provided a lot of resources. Going to check mine out after the show. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, Bennett. Absolutely.